It's perfectly alright if Chris Hemsworth wants to do a non-Marvel movie, but what about his brother Liam? I mean, we don't really see him in movies anymore, and he's had a hard time getting work ever since that career darkening shadow that was Independence Day 2. But I digress. Let's see how Chris does when he's not playing the son of Odin. This is from the towers. You carry that with you. Hey there guys, how are you? It's me, the Canadian Movie Buff, with a review of 12 Strong. The story follows a group of Green Berets known as Task Force Dagger, the first soldiers to strike back against the Taliban after the 9-11 attacks. It stars Chris Hemsworth, Michael Shannon, Michael Pena, Rob Riggle, William Fetchner, and Nagin Negabom as Abdul Rashid Dustin, the leader of the Northern Alliance who became the Vice President of Afghanistan in 2014. As someone who has seen his fair share of war movies, I tend to prefer those that take place in the past. Movies about World War I or World War II or Vietnam, mainly because people tend to get a bit touchy around movies about American intervention in the Middle East. Just like in the trailers for those movies, scroll down to the comment section and I guarantee you there's be comments talking about how this is a propaganda against the Middle East or something. But that isn't to say I enjoyed the odd modern war movie here and there. And while this movie does leave most of the tropes that come with said modern war movies, it loses traction with its unimpressive performances by the numbers plot and shoddy camera work. What I loved was how this movie explored the relationship between Captain Mitch Nelson and General Rashid Dustin. The chemistry that Hemsworth has with Negaban, who gives a breakout performance in this role, felt genuine. You can tell that these are two very respected leaders who want to do the best job to bring freedom back to this country. You have Mitch Nelson, who's an American, trying to do what he believes is the right thing. Then you have Rashid Dustin trying to free his country from oppressive rulers. They're the ones who drive the movie forward, and the movie does a great job getting you invested in them. The action was, to put it best, not exploitive. It was like people got shot five times and blood was everywhere or somebody blo got blown up and guts were hanging out. The most you would see would be a blood spurt that here and there and maybe the aftermath of an explosion. But these are more or less blink and you miss it moments. Now none of the Green Berets died on this mission, but the movie did a good job conveying the danger that they felt. They knew that they could die at any given moment and it was important that they got the job done. This movie puts you in their shoes and makes you experience what they were going through. And it was a nice refresher to see a happy ending considering most modern war movies end with almost everybody getting killed. I felt that this movie tried a bit too hard at times to earn that R rating. First 5 minutes of the movie, we have people dropping F-bombs left, right, and center. This movie could have earned the R rating just by violence alone, but I guess the writer was like, No, we gotta show that this is serious dialogue. Even though the movie stuck to being accurate, it was a fairly by-the-numbers plot. You have the setup, introduce the characters, the soldiers, the squad, then you have the first major battle, then the characters have a moment of retreat, they discuss their next move, you have the second battle, which is the more climactic battle, and then the movie ends. If you've seen enough of these war movies that take place in the Middle East, you're better off reading the events that the movie is based on than seeing the movie itself. Aside from Hemsworth and Negabon, the rest of the cast was fairly forgettable. The weird thing was, they would disappear for half the movie and then they would come back and you're like, Oh, yeah, that's, you're in this too. Kind of forgot about that. As we get to the action scenes, everything gets so clumsily shot. Especially when they're fighting on horseback and the camera just bounces up and down so much. I can just imagine the director going, Alright, we gotta make this shot as authentic as literally possible. So let's slap a camera on that horse over there, send him running through the battlefield, and hope we get some decent footage out of it. The main issue with Twelve Strong is that it wants to be the next January military movie hit, like Lone Survivor or 13 Hours, American Sniper. What it gives us is an alright movie that really plays it safe for the most part plot-wise and gives us some forgettable characters and aside from giving us an insight on how two figureheads cooperate, they don't really try anything new, except for maybe the camel horse? It's a solid but also forgettable and predictable action flick, one that's best worth checking out if it's on Netflix. Alright, that's my review of 12 Strong. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Leave your answer by commenting down below, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're new, and as always, this is the Canadian Movie Buff saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. See ya!